Hi, I'm Dominic Patton from Deadline Hollywood, and thank you for joining us again on Next Generation TV. I'm here today with Underground's Journey Smollett Bell. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much for having me. You know I love the show so much. Now, we want to talk about a lot of things you've done in your career, but uh -huh. certainly for a lot of people, the breakout performance that you've done for two seasons now as Rosalie on the WGN America show has really shown people a whole new side of you. I think that the character you play of, of Rosalie on this show is very much a, an evolution of Nicole from when you were on True Blood. In so many ways, um, True Blood prepared me for Underground. You know, True Blood was such an out-of-the-box show for so many reasons, and it's why the fans loved it so much. But, you know, living in the woods and all the action and um, this, this, the demands of the show, I think, are very much so like But also, too, I think the character of Nicole, like Rosalie, is, you know, she's a... I don't want to say a believer to imply a religious element, but like she's an optimist. She believes yeah. that things can, that people can find a way to be together, even when reality yeah. is either biting her in the neck or literally putting her in chains. Yeah, absolutely. She believes in the the human will, you know, and she believes in the good in hu in human beings. And I think um, Rosalie, like Nicole, you know, they both went through this crazy change you know when you first meet nicole she's kind of this wide-eyed you know optimist activist who thinks she can come down to this strange land and change everything and is very humbled you know uh, immediately and i think it's almost the reverse with rosalie though you know rosalie starts off um having this dream having this 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 yearning inside but too afraid almost to even acknowledge that that exists because acknowledging that you're dreaming about escaping means death for someone like Rosalie. But you know one thing that both have in common mm. also is Anthony Hemingway. This is true. Yeah, I this met is true. Anthony Hemingway on True Blood. And actually, when I read the script for Underground, my agent sent it to me. And I was literally about to take an offer for something else. Um, that also had Anthony Hemingway as a director? Had nothing to do with Anthony. You know, I'm just going to say, because Anthony, Anthony, is, Anthony is a working man. Like, he He's shows up several everywhere. several projects yeah. going. No, but after reading Underground, I immediately texted Anthony pretty much like a whole chapter worth of a text. All the reasons why I was Rosalie. Um, and I was like, look, you're going to give me this role, okay? And these are the reasons why and no one else... Did he text back, yes, ma'am? No, you know what he texted mm. back? He texted back a picture of his pitching book that he had used to pitch to Misha and Joe, all the visuals of who um, and what he thought Underground was, and next to the name Rosalie was my picture. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done. Well yeah. done, Mr. Hemingway. Now, looking at that, though, I mean, this season, season two of Underground, mm -hmm. your character has gone, went through a massive transformation. But there's one episode in particular that I think a lot of people don't realize is you were pregnant during much of this. And there's that particular episode where you spend almost the entire episode in the mud. Yeah, episode three. What was that about? They nicknamed it Rosalie's Revenant. <laughs> <laughs> without the bear. <laughs> yes, without the bear. But we had leeches and snakes and everything else. Yeah, you know, um, when Misha and Joe were writing season two, or kind of coming up with a skeleton of what it was going to be, I wasn't pregnant. You know, and they had all these big ambitions um, ab about what, you know, Rosalie's adventure was going to be this season. And it was really important to us all, honestly, to see this transformation happen from her to go from this shy house girl who's never stepped outside of the plantation to someone who has the guts to do it in spite of her fear. I mean, in many ways, I think, you know, some ways Underground is her story. I mean, obviously it's an ensemble with, with many actors, but it's her story as it's America's story of yeah. breaking the bound, of, of, of the acceptance of slavery. Yeah. The idea that like, well, this is just the way it is. This is, just this is how we're all gonna so live. Yeah. It's an economic system, it's a yeah. social system, it's obviously a racial system. Yes. And this is just how the world works and yes. you just can't live with it. Whereas it says, actually there are people who literally will risk their lives to be free. Absolutely, because death actually is a better option than life here on this plantation. Mm -hmm. And you know, that philosophy of acceptance and settling is something that my mom, Ernestine, played by the brilliant Amira Van, raised me up to believe that you have to keep your head down and just do the work, lose yourself in the work. And it becomes something that through a course of events, namely with what happens with Bill, where I'm almost, you know, where he attempts to rape me and I kill him, in my mind, um, I've got no choice. All my options are taken away. I have to run now. And, you know, we see over the course of season one, this inner strength come out in Rosalie and by the beginning of season two, she becomes a soldier. And she becomes so determined to go and get her family back 
out of this bondage because she's now stepped onto the other side of the river and had a little bit of taste of freedom and knows, you know what, I cannot live here in peace and harmony without my family. The scripts, you know, weren't entirely even finished when we were shooting because we were working up against the clock to shoot me out. I had to go and have my baby. We started and that's shooting. that's a hard out. Yeah, 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 literally. We started shooting when I was seven months pregnant, and we had to shoot all ten episodes um, before I, you know, would go into labor. And so episode three, me and Anthony were in the woods, you know, toughing it out, and there's a, a scene with the, um, the character where I have to do a fight scene. And we had pretty much discussed that I would do what I could do. Um, and I had an amazing stunt team led by Tier uh, Turner. But I was watching this fight happen, and, and I just was like, Anthony, put me in. Because, <laughs> you know, still, even in spite of me being pregnant, I felt so strong. And I, that, I don't know, the mama bear spirit that we explore with Rosalie, I felt it as well, where you feel like you can really do the impossible. Um, and in season two, you know, I think this element of pregnancy, you know, it really helped raise the stakes almost um, with Rosalie because you have this secret that she's keeping from Harriet. She's keeping it from Noah. And when Noah does find out, it's explosive. Um, and she really is willing to risk so much um, to make this idea of freedom happen for her. You started out in this industry when you were 11 years old. Even before that. Really? I didn't know about Before Eve, Yeah. which I guess is a movie unto itself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Eve's Bayou is like the film, I think, that I kind of feel like I started with because it's the film or the project in which I realized I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. But I had done like little things like commercials and stuff like that before and some TV. But it was Eve's Bayou for sure where I felt like this is what it's about. And I experienced At 11? The, yes, because... Un, it's, and it's hard for people to understand, but I think the way a child can play baseball when they're 10 years old and know, I want to be a baseball player when I grow up. I experienced that on the set of Eve's Bayou. Um, it was that high, that stimulation that as an artist you experience when you get lost in something. And you're forever chasing that And have you as an artist found it again? Is that the high? I have in moments. I have. Um, sometimes I fall short. And sometimes I, I surpass it and I feel something completely different. There have been moments where filmmakers have pushed me beyond my limits. There have been moments where I'm like, whoa, I didn't even know that was in there. And then there's moments, you know, as, a, as an artist where you find out something about yourself through your character. What would you like to do that you haven't done yet? Direct. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Explain. Um, you know, the image of Casey Lemons on set when I was 10, and Amy Vincent, our DP. That image of a woman being behind the camera has stuck with me ever since, and I'm still really close with Casey. I mean, I think of her as like part of my family. Um, but as I've grown up and evolved, you know, I, I'm so fascinated by storytelling, and there's so many stories I want to see told that I don't necessarily care to be in. But also just in general, you know, I, um, producing and, and helping others, you know, tell stories that maybe I don't need to be a part of. Listen, I love acting and I love that as well, but I'm such a fan of what we do, you know, and, and the magic in what we do that I definitely um, am taking steps to move behind the camera. Then we'll talk to you when you do that, madam. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you. much. Thank you so much.